Moin! In this electroplating tutorial you will see how a longer 3D printed sword can be fully metal coated. Of course, like with helmets this is a bigger challenge. This prop alone has kept me busy for 4 weeks now. Nevertheless, the results really impressive. I'm always fascinated by the fact that you can bring such an idea to life at home. Yeah, if you're willing to acquire all the necessary tools. Enough talking, here's the roadmap to creating larger metal props. Let's push the boundaries a little further. As always, and that's the whole purpose of this channel, the 3D printing comes first. You can create FDM or resin prints and for coating it doesn't really matter. The important thing is to prepare them meticulously. Generally, I find resin prints to be very suitable because the parts can be sanded very smoothly. FDM printed pieces need to be freed from their characteristic layers using filler. Vapor smoothing is not sufficient as it makes the prints smooth but not even. This is an absolute requirement, the metal reflects very strongly and any unevenness will be noticeable later. I purchased the model of the master sword that I'm creating here because the details, the blade, handle and cross guard were all available separately in a high resolution. I scaled it up to 130% because although it was the official size before, it just didn't cut it. So, now you have produced some nice prints. Of course, there are very scars and support residue on them. We'll clean those up later. For now, let's lay it down in its full length. It already looks quite big. To ensure that the entire saw doesn't fall apart at the side of it, I have designed an 8mm groove running lengthwise through the entire saw. Measure it out and cut it to size using a metal saw. Then, the contact surfaces of the blade need to be sanded down to a smooth finish. Coarse sandpaper works very well for this. Now slide the pieces onto the threaded rod one by one and glue them together using super glue. Yes, super glue. The threaded rod and the thick copper layer will make it hold together firmly later on. And before we proceed, let's have the obligatory warning again. Almost everything I'm going to do from now on screams for PPE. Whether it's fumes, dust or liquids, you should always wear a respirator mask and safety goggles. It's best to do this outdoors or in a well-ventilated area. Stay safe. Now let's take care of the transitions between the individual pieces. These need to be filled perfectly. I use a filler that I mix with acetone and spread into the gaps. It dries fairly quickly and shrinks very little. It says for professional use only on the label, which probably doesn't bond well for health. Oh, mail has arrived. In order to be able to fully coat this long blade with copper in one go, I had acrylic sheets cut. I want to use them to create a kind of aquarium where I can hang the sword vertically. This way, I'll need a much smaller amount of electrolyte compared to, let's say, the Mandalorian helmet. So you'll need acrylic glue for this. And again, the note says, restricted to professional users. Please forgive me, this is my first time attempting this. I know that all the acrylic experts out there will probably be shaking their heads in disbelief. Whatever, the adhesive will be cured with UV light and then the plating tower will be ready. I quickly did a leak test in the garden and now we can continue. It looks super spectacular with the new design. The sword blade fits perfectly inside and has to rotate in the bath to ensure even copper deposition. My small rotary jig isn't really up to the task due to buoyancy and such, so I designed a new super sturdy one specifically for this tank. I can use stabilizers and securely suspend it. Now the anodes need to be inserted. These are copper plates that extend from top to bottom on both sides and dissolve in the electrolyte later on. The copper will then be deposited onto the blade using an electric current. Cut suitable strips with tin snips for this purpose. You can simply assemble them together somehow. It should be fine since everything conducts electricity somehow. Now. Hang them in the basin. 
place the rotary jig on top and it should work as intended. Is it worth the effort? Yeah, hopefully it is. Back to the sword. Now it's time for sanding. Grab some sandpaper 600 to 1000 grit and try to make the seams and the rest of the sword as smooth as possible. Once you've achieved that, use car filler or primer, spray and sand, spray and sand until you're really confident that it's nice and smooth. Then we can mix up the conductive paint. I'm using copper conductive paint diluted 1 to 2 with acetone. Apply it in two layers. An airbrush works particularly well for this. I am using a very affordable one with a 0.5mm needle tip that I only use for this purpose. Now select your regulated power supply. I have a 5 amps and a 30 amps power supply and for the calculated 10 amps that I need I probably use the latter. When choosing power supplies make sure they can be operated in constant current mode. Now fill the tank with an acidic copper electrolyte. As I mentioned I am using 15 liters but you can make the tank smaller to save some money. However I prefer to have some distance from the anodes. Connect the anodes to the positive terminal and the blade to the negative terminal through the rotary jig. Now set the power supply to CC mode and limit the current to 10 amps. The voltage regulation is taken care of by the power supply. If you like, you can now watch for approximately 4 hours as the anodes dissolve and copper is deposited onto the blade. After that you can disassemble everything in reverse order. What follows is the polishing part. It takes longer, but it turns this copper sword into a copper sword with a stunning mirror finish. Here's the process. Get yourself some water and sandpaper ranging from 800 to 2000 grit. Just have confidence and go for it. Finally, you can use polishing compound for the finishing touches. Now we move on to the guard, the handle and the small decorative elements. Even if you're not in the mood for it, all of these need to be sanded smooth. Resin printers are already very precise, but even if you can hardly see the layers, they are still present and electroplating amplifies everything. I recommend printing with anti-aliasing set to the highest level to minimize the amount of sanding. And once everything is smooth, you can spray the conductive paint again. I don't use any adhesive promoter or primer here. The paint and copper will adhere securely later on. Let the paint dry thoroughly and prepare a new bath. Everything is essentially the same here. If you assume 10 amps, then you'll need around 1.5 volts. Rotating doesn't work because the print is actually too big. Yeah, no, I should have used the new basin, right? <laughs> Be careful, at low voltage there's relatively high current and even if the power supply is off, there can be sparks. But it was worth it in the end. Quickly filter the electrolyte through coffee filters and now the small decorative prints can go into the bath. Once that's done we have everything together. By the way the copper coating on all the 3D prints is approximately 0.25mm thick. This means we can do a lot of polishing and sanding. In the end it should shine brightly. That's why we go through all this effort. On the left side is unpolished and on the right side is polished. After nursing our saw fingers, we'll prepare everything for the nickel plating. Nickel bass plating is essentially the same. We use a nickel anode and nickel electrolyte for this process. To ensure successful plating, the object must be thoroughly clean and free from oxidation. You can achieve this by using a degreaser and a 10% citric acid solution. 
For simplicity, I prefer to use constant voltage and set it to 2.2 volts across the board. After around 3 minutes, the objects will have a cool nickel surface. You're probably familiar with it, the Master Sword has golden decorations. Gold plating works great with a non-woven and a graphite anode on the nickel plated surface. For this I use 24k gold electrolyte and apply a voltage of 4.4 volts. I soak the non-woven in the electrolyte and make circular movements over the nickel plated piece while the graphite rod anode is connected to the positive terminal and the 3D print to the negative terminal. In a very short time, everything is beautifully gold plated. Bling bling! The same process now applies to the blade. Here, I use palladium electrolyte directly on the copper. Next, we spray transparent acrylic paint on the handle and guard. I have various colors for this and I naively tried to mix blue and red to create a sort of light indigo shade, but it only worked moderately well. Anyway, it will be applied with an airbrush and should be allowed to dry thoroughly. The model included an SDL file for the braided strap, but I prefer to make it myself. And done. Now everything can finally be assembled and glued together. And with that, it's finally finished and ready for practical use. Feel free to check out the other electroplating tutorials here on the channel and leave me a comment. Thank you. Tschüss.